as interesting and, and sort of viral as uh, as these hot dog effects are, uh, and the company kind of trumpeting it as as one way out there. Is this the way investors are to think about what innovation is at Snapchat? These kind of you know kind of buzzy little features that get people to just spend more time on chat, uh, Snapchat and engage more. Well, I think what, what Snapchat would like us to focus on and like investors to focus on is that engagement. They just announced that users under the age of 25 are spending an average of 40 minutes a day using Snapchat. 40 minutes a day. And that's 10 minutes more than they were spending at the end of the fourth quarter of last year. So pretty significant growth and engagement. And what Snapchat would argue is that by innovating, by creating lenses for your face and then innovating and now creating lenses for the world around you like that dancing hot dog, um, you just saw in front of me that those are the kinds of things that keep users coming back, making sure they're on Snapchat daily. The question I heard a lot on the call is whether they're going to be able to, here we are again, whether they're going to be able to make as much money from these things, these lenses, as they are from ads in the Discover platform, which is much more like a traditional ad platform. Kurt, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm just not that convinced. I mean, we've seen effects like this before. I mean, Pokemon Go is a good example. I remember we did the same kind of thing. It was all over our network. Everyone had fun with it. I guess it was good for that game, but this is not so much good for Snap, is it? I mean, what are they going to have to do? Are they going to have to come out with something like this hourly, daily, a lot more content well, for this to turn into maybe a strategy that advertisers get involved with and can fundamentally change the growth prospects and the business model? Well, you bring up a really great point, which is that how often can they actually come out with a brand new product and hit that, that everyone loves and also one that is going to be unique enough that Facebook or Instagram or someone else cannot immediately copy that because that's what we've seen from these companies so far is that when uh, Snapchat comes out with something cool and exciting, Facebook's right there six months behind to, uh, you know, roll it out to two billion users versus Snap's, you know, 170 million. So uh, this is a very tough strategy and I think what people want is is not only this, but they want them to show that they can create a viable advertising business behind that so that when it takes a couple months or even a year for them to come out with the next cool thing, they have a, you know, an important, uh, reliable business underneath to carry them through that time. Yeah, and of course, Julia, uh, we should obviously mention that there's a lot else going on in terms of content strategy uh, at Snap, where in terms of professionally produced content shows, uh, other things like that. I guess, I, is there any way to gauge just yet uh, how excited advertisers are for, uh, for those things? Well, the company reported that advertising revenue increased about 150% year over year, 25% quarter over quarter. Um, and they say that over 75% of the top 100 ad age advertisers are now advertising on the platform. I think that it would be interesting to see more granularly the kind of um, results that advertisers are getting. Because right now, we're hearing from a lot of advertisers that they, were, they would like to have another third big player, an alternative to Facebook and Google. Right now, brands feel like they have to invest in Facebook and Google. And the question is whether Snapchat really becomes that must-have destination. That's a good point. And Kurt, how much technology is behind the deployment of a dancing hot dog, albeit with your face in it. I get it, it's AR. But forget just Facebook. Why couldn't any other company who wanted to do something nifty come out with similar kinds of tools? Well, you're actually going to see a lot more companies come out with similar stuff because both Facebook and Apple are coming out with AR platforms, right? So they're basically opening up uh, in Apple's case, the iPhone, in Facebook's case, its camera app, uh, and saying, hey, if you have a cool idea like a dancing hot dog, like a fun dog face filter, you can build it on our platform and get it to all of our users. And so this whole concept of Snap kind of being the first to pioneer a lot of these fun AR uh, features is not going to last forever because the bigger players are, are trying to get into that space as well, and they have such bigger reach than Snapchat does. I think there's going to be a lot more of this moving forward. Julia, you know, we had a, uh, an analyst on yesterday who was talking about the launch of the iPhone 8 might be a big moment for, uh, for Snap just because you need such a high-end phone with all these different capabilities to take full advantage of it. Is that something that you think uh, both the company and the uh, investment community are really fixated on at this point? I think that a Snap has shown that its AR can work with the phones that we all have now. I think that Snap will probably continue to try to evolve to make sure that they stay ahead of this. But one thing that's interesting is, you know, you mentioned Apple and Google moving into this AR space. 
Right now, SNAP's biggest competition is co competition is Facebook and it's Instagram. Um, and I was surprised that yesterday in the call there weren't any specific comments about Facebook and Instagram. But Evan Spiegel did sort of make allusion to them when he said that they've always been up against these giants. So I think he understands um, that he's always going to be facing this massive competition and he's always going to be reliant on the phone makers. And even though they did um, launch these SNAP spectacles, it was interesting to see that you know this. This could have been another key way for them to sort of have a touch point with the consumer, but the spectacles don't seem to be doing very well. Their revenues were actually down between the first and the second quarter. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.